Welcome back to Movies TV Mad. Remember, you can follow me on Twitter. Where I'm also called at Movies TV Mad. And then it's TikTok and Instagram at Movies TV Mad. Triple five. A movie studio is not your charity. It's not my charity. It's in the business of entertainment. Now, that's something very, very interesting, I think, because in the business of entertainment could sound like, well, they're just here to entertain. No, they're not. They're here to entertain, but they're here to make the fullest capacity of their financial potential. So, for example, when Star Wars The Force Awakens made over $2 billion, they thought, hey, hey let's make some more of these. For some reason, they didn't. They didn't do that again. Nobody really knows the exact reason why The Force Awakens made over $2 billion at the global box office. I think it was because of Han, Luke and Leia. But I also think that movie worked for a broader audience. It was a great reintroduction into Star Wars. And if J.J. Abrams and the same people came back to do that movie, I feel that that would have been huge. There's so many conversations now when it comes to the DCEU and what's the correct direction. I think it's no surprise to me that not, not many auteur directors and storytellers have successfully made comic book movies. Very few. I mean, you can argue that Snyder's movies, all three of them, made good money and they all made profit. That's true. I don't know about the Snyder Cut. Nobody really knows about the Snyder Cut. We can just hazard a guess. For me, it's been successful. But who knows, because they've been hiding the true figures. How many auteurs have made successful, good, good comic book movies? I mean, you'd have to say Snyder's movies are good from my point of view and many, many people's perspective. Todd Phillips, The Joker. Wow. Is Sam Raimi an auteur? I, I'm not sure. But how many MCU movies were directed or have been directed by auteurs? Very, very few. You see, comic book movies are huge IPs. They always have been, by the way. Most of them failed 20, 30 years ago. Very few of them were successful. I mean, you look at Superman the movie, Superman 2, even Superman 3 is deemed a success. Batman 89, Batman Returns, both huge successes. Even Batman Forever did okay. There's quite a few successful ones, but there's even more from 20, 30 years ago that are failures. It didn't really matter back then because you kind of did something. If it didn't work, like Green Lantern, you just move on from it. That was the attitude. Now it's the central business of the studio and the entertainment industry, right? You have to, you, you now have to make comic book superhero movies as many times as you have to go to the bathroom or eat your dinner or you won't survive. You fed the audience on it, so it has to work. So we have a situation over at WB and DC where they brought in Snyder but you've brought in a certain audience and a certain fan base and they're fighting for something else. And there's the argument, should you, you, should you strive to make movies for the broader audience? Of course you should. If you're a business worth your salt, you should. Fag and the MCU have done that. That stamp is a stamp of quality now. People will watch any old shit with that logo on it. That's the way to do it. I've always said the MCU is a great franchise. The DCEU has better movies. There is there is a dynamic there. It's very interesting, isn't it? There, there is an analogy there to, to see that. It's obvious for me personally. But what is the right thing to do in terms of DC? Were they supposed to just keep Snyder on and keep Snyder on and keep Snyder on? Obviously, the man had a plan. He had, had a beginning, middle and ending. He even wasn't going to enact a Flashpoint movie himself to leave it fresh and open for someone else to come in. But the studio weren't happy because it wasn't enough for the studio to make some money. The studio want to make the hottest IP in cinema to make as much money as they want. Business people are greedy, and rightfully so. They're business people. That's their, that's their role in life, to be utterly greedy and to make as much money for the shareholders and the studios as possible. They're not here to say, well, this director's really good. His films look great, right? 
His films caused um, a divisive reaction. His films didn't make as much money as they wanted them to make. That's the problem. And so when they look, you look at their multiverse strategy, potentially that is something that can attract a broader audience, something that can make more money. And the tool they're using to start again, reboot the universe via a Flash movie is perfect. But it isn't perfect for some of the fans. This is going to run and run. It's quite simple, actually. If these movies are successful, it doesn't really matter what people say. And they will be quietened by the larger fan base who is going to embrace and consume these movies. But at the end of the day, the entertainment industry didn't start on listening to people back when, you know, back in the 20s, when they really started rolling out the movies. No one really listened to the audience. But what they did do is make sure to make things that people liked. So there's a difference there again. There's an analogy there to take. So with this, a lot of people are saying, well, they're just following the MCU formula. And to a point they are. I think these films will be better than the MCU movies, by the way. I, I truly believe that. I know people are shouting at their screens right now. But in terms of this strategy, if you're shouting on the internet about them being wrong to do this, no. Because as I say, their role in life is to create a successful franchise. Because personally, if you think, well, was picking Snyder right? Well, it's right if you want unique auteur type of movies that have, very, have got this in the indie movie kind of quality to them, then they were right. But if they wanted to make as much money as possible and, you know, reach a broader audience, then they were wrong to bring in Snyder. We know the histrionics to it. So that's what you're going to look at. Basically, depth, entertainment or money, good business. The MCU is good business. The original kind of bringing back of Doctor Who with Russell T Davies was good business. And so everyone has their favorite things, but ultimately you've got to think about it. It is our role as consumers to like what we want to like, but also understand that they want to make money and you will never beat them. When they want to make money, they have got a huge IP here. And basically, just to say to them, you're wrong, you're toxic for going away with what, from what we want. At the end of the day, there's so many people who have not been surfaced since, you know, serviced since the, you know, the inception of the DCEU. There's lots of people standing in the background hoping that their characters could have a little bit more of a comic book feel to them. And so a lot more people are excited now. So it's interesting. So those people who are not happy, they're moving away from the Snyderverse, they're angry and their, their agendas and propaganda are all over the internet. It's not going to make a difference because, as I say, this is a business. Money comes first. So they want to make entertaining movies. They don't mind if they're remembered forever, but they want to make entertaining movies. They want to create a great franchise with great movies, and we'll see how they do it. For me personally, even as an admirer of Snyder's DCEU movies, I understand any business would make this decision. And I believe it's a decision that Discovery will embrace because they're ambitious. They brought into this company, this studio, to make as much money as possible, not to win friends and not to influence people. I will see you tonight at 6.30 p.m. for my live stream, Movies TV Mad Live. Check your local listings. Until my live stream tonight, I'll see you later. Goodbye.